everyone, and welcome to episode 478 of the MTG Goldfish Podcast. I'm Seth, probably better known as Seth Fred Olive, and we have the full crew here this week, kicking things off with the owner of MTG Goldfish, Richard. How you doing this fine Monday, Richard? Good morning, Seth. Uh, allergies are still getting me, but uh, <laughs> soon enough, <laughs> the trees will stop blossoming <laughs> and I'll be good to go. <laughs> uh, we have another co-host in Krim. Good morning, Krim. How you doing today? Morning. I also have allergies, so it's great Ooh. all around. Am, am I the only one that doesn't have allergies on the cast? I don't really have allergies, I don't think. Lucky, you live lucky in the wilderness, me. Seth. You're yeah. immune. <laughs> yeah. I'm used to yeah, pollen and bugs and all that when stuff. When the one tree <laughs> blossoms, it's over for me. <laughs> I, like, I go on a sneezing spree if there's any like too much pollen, so... <laughs> Anyway, outside of allergies, we got a good cast today. It is Outlaws of Thunder Junction time. We have about a million spoiler cards to talk about. Like this set is pretty wild. It's got a lot of really cool cards. So today we're just going to give our gut reactions to the set. We're going to go over the mechanics, a lot of cool cards, what the set's actually about. And then next week, once we have all the cards from the set, we'll be talking about the best cards for non-commander formats for constructed from the set. So that's the overview for today. Before we get into it, though, a reminder that today's show is brought to you by Card Conduit, and Card Conduit's the easiest way to sell your magic cards. If you ever get tired of the hassles of buy listing, you can skip them with Card Conduit. With their curated service, you can send in as many cards as you want with a buy list value of a dollar or more, and pay just a 5% service fee. And if you want to do a bit of work, you can use this sorted service where you list and sort your cards in advance and pay just a 2% fee. And either way, you're going to get a detailed report with the results and a fast payment once your order is processed. And you can even get another 10% off by heading over to CardConduit.com slash mtg goldfish card conduit they're the easiest way to sell your magic cards so thank you to card conduit for supporting this show and let's talk some outlaws at thunder junction and before we get into the cards and the mechanics and there's a lot of them this set's really wonky so let's first break down what is actually in this set because it's actually like two or almost three sets in one richard what are we actually dealing with with the outlaws at thunder junction here Why'd you put me on the spot, Seth? I don't know. Go ask the other. Uh, oh my okay. goodness. There's like 18 set codes and four special seats. So I shouldn't say that. Nyota gets mad when we spread misinformation. So Seth, you probably know the exact number of special set codes and sets that come with outlaws. I'm gonna put okay, you on the spot. A lot. Okay, okay, okay. So here's and I might miss something, but here is my understanding of Outlaws of Thunder Junction. So we get the main set which is, like any other main set, a bunch of rares, mythics, uncommons, all that right. stuff. It comes OTJ. with... OTJ yeah. is the set yeah. symbol for that one. It comes with uh, some special treatments, the wanted posters, which those are just part of the main set. Some of the legends in the set, especially the outlaws, I think maybe it's all outlaws, have these wanted they're poster sweet. treatments. They're, they're pretty cool looking. It's like their face on an old school wanted poster. So that's the main set. But then we also have breaking news cards. Breaking news. I don't know the, the OTJ. Is it just the same or does it have its own set code? I don't know the set code for it, but it's essentially like Brothers War retro artifacts or Strixhaven's Mystical Archives. It's like a sheet of cards that all have a special treatment, uh, and it's all reprints. None of the legality changes or anything. If it was already legal and modern, it's still legal, but a legacy card isn't going to become modern legal because of that. Then we also have... That's special... OTP, by the way. OTP, oh okay, for breaking news. Okay. Then we have 10 special guest cards, which are all reprints. They have a different art treatment that, again, don't change in legality. Big one, Stoneforge yep. Mystic. I don't know the set code for whoa, that. Does whoa, that whoa, have whoa. a set code, too? SPG. Not Notion Thief? No? Yeah, SPG. I mean, yeah, Notion that Thief is going to be good. annoying. It does look good. But Stoneforge is just, ah, oh, that's an impactful card in a good reprint. And then finally... We have B.I.G., maybe, for Big Score. That would be my guess at the set code. Big Score was going to be March of the Machines Aftermath, but remember how bad Aftermath flopped and everyone hated it? So rather than trying to sell us mini packs for full price, they were nice and just put all those cards in the main set this time. So you can get them in the list slot. Like, I think it's one in every four or five packs. You'll get a a, uh, a list card, which will be one of these big score cards, which is another 40 or 50 rares and mythics, I think, that'll be added to the set. It said it's so, kind of that's BIG, and that is standard legal, right? 
That is yes. standard legal, yes. So we haven't seen many of those yet. We saw like three spoilers on the first day of spoiler season, I think, from the big scorecards. But they're supposed to reveal all those this week. So that's really, a set has what, like 20 mythics and 60 rares? And I believe this is at least 40 mostly rares and mythics. So it's almost like another half of a set being added into this set as far as the number of standard legal rares and mythics we're going to be getting which is kind of exciting like this is part of why i'm hyped for this set it's super confusing and it's probably too much for anyone to keep track of but there's going to be a lot of cool cards at least it's pretty much two set block all in one pa one set right <laughs> it, it, right? Is. Like, it basically is <laughs> it's it's a lot dude like i i i'm not gonna lie to you i have no idea where no idea what comes from what all i know is that there are some sweet reprints uh, through through all the non main set stuff? So I I, I don't know. It, it is getting a bit confusing uh, even for for this set. But I think that's not that. Like I mean, when it gets multiple things added in, like the additional aftermath set, I'm not surprised that it's kind of jam packed with a bunch of cards. And I give okay. wizards credit for that like uh, they could have continued forward and just printed another aftermath and everyone would have got really mad again but instead they did i think this is the more consumer friendly thing right like you get these cards now just by opening normal packs rather than having to pay extra money to buy special packs to get them so i think that's good for the community and players i, I, I think doesn't that mean there's now more variants though like if i if i wanted to open specifically I don't know the mana drain, uh, uh breaking news, right? <laughs> <It's> impossible. <laughs> now, now, yeah, yeah. Now it'll be like double time, but I guess that will so, then make it so this set. I don't know. So I think slot after. I think it's okay, though, because I think so with the breaking news, you should get one every pack no matter what. So I don't think the big scorecards will impact that. You just will always get one of them. What will be kind of weird is the big scorecards because only you only get one of those every five packs, I believe it is. So those cards will probably be pretty rare, although no one opened Aftermath. So I think Aftermath cards are kind of rare anyway because most people just skip that set. So so maybe yeah, it Nisto evens out like, in the long run. Or, yeah. So I'm yeah, sorry, Steph, can you expensive. clarify when you say one every five packs? Is that a, a play booster? Is that a collector That's, booster? We only have, <laughs> oh, well, I guess we still have collector boosters, but all is that a pre con? Cards. <laughs> all of these cards will be in play boosters. Uh, I believe every single one of them. The only one I'm not sure on is. Uh, the special guests, but I believe those also come in play boosters. But some of the treatments, like the special foiling of the breaking news cards or whatever, you'll only get in collector boosters. And there's no serialized cards this set, right? Have Not that we've seen, unless it. they announce something later this week before spoiler season ends. But yeah, so far, no, uh, no serialized stuff. Yeah. And of wow. course, there's also the commander set, which is OTC, oh, yeah. which we haven't mentioned. You those are those are coming out Thursday. There's four Commander Precons. Head over to the MGO Fish Commander channel. Tomer's going to be covering all those. So that's the set breakdown. But the set also has like three or four, I guess, depending on how you count Outlaws, uh, mechanics. Richard, why don't we talk some cards and mechanics from this set? Ah, I, I, will, I will say that this set is like literally unplayable. Every day I read a spoiler and then I'm like, what does this card even do? Because it lists a new keyword. Without the reminder text. <laughs> there's not room. Right? Like, there's no like, there's room so for reminder text. text. <laughs> that they're just like, plot this card. I'm like, okay, what does plot do? Does it say anywhere in the card? Okay, I guess I don't know, <laughs> right? Like, and the funny thing is, you're like, well, I'm looking at another plot card. So you, you, you yank up another plot card, doesn't have the text. You got to find like some weird common that like is vanilla and they have enough room to put <laughs> reminder text on it. So uh, let, let, let's run into an example of a card that has a mechanic that's not explained. Jace reawakened. Uh, yeah. It's, it's, it's Tybalt. He's back. Two mana Planeswalker. Double blue. Three starting loyalty. Legendary Planeswalker. Jace, you can't cast the spell on your first, second, or third turns of the game. Plus one. Draw a card, then discard a card. Plus one. You may exile a non-land card. With mana value three or less from your hand, if you do, it becomes plotted. Minus six until end of turn. Whenever you cast a spell copy, it, you may choose new targets for the copy. Now, what does plot do? The owner may cast it as a sorcery on a later turn without paying its mana cost. At sorcery speed. At sorcery yeah. speed. 
it's it's kind of like foretells probably the best comparison like you can exile the card one difference is it's going to be face up so your opponent's going to know what that card is and then in the future during your turn at sorcery speed you'll be able to cast it for free when i first heard of this mechanic i was like this sounds so horrible like why would i ever want to spend full value most of these cards the plot cost is the same as their mana cost or in some cases more there's a couple where it's less but i was like why do i want to play more to be able to cast this card in the future but the way they design plot is actually pretty cool where it, uh, most of the cards in one way or another do re reward you for being able to play it for free and then like follow it up with something else to get counters on it or cast something to like draw a card so it actually ended up being a really cool mechanic Krim you're a you're a control player and a Jace fan how good do you think this Jace is it's just a, a value card like how big is that restriction not being able to play it early do you just jam this in your control decks is it good enough well first off I'd like to say that I and apparently 10 other people are still Jace devoted. Uh, I'm very, I am still excited. <laughs> there's dozens, to Jace. dozens of there, us. There's at least 12 of us. Uh, <laughs> and so that makes me really excited to see Jace back. Um, I will say that this card looks fun. I am a little curious on how it'll play out in the control decks that I, I, I've been playing because temporary lockdown is one of like the key cards. This yeah. gets picked off by temporary lockdown. Um, but the one thing that is nice about it, uh, the, the, the little restriction that they got, I'm going to be honest with you, outside of trying to do what I assume what we're all thinking about, ley line of anticipation, uh, to try to get it out as early got as him. possible and on their turn. Outside That's of so that... Bad. <laughs> I, uh, it sounds fun though that plus like Valky right like why wouldn't you want to try that um, but I will say this card does curve nicely on turn four I can now play this and hold up like no more lies uh, removal so there uh, the both of its first two abilities are both plus one uh, the minus six the emblem is kind of like meh but I do really like the latter to, uh, the first two abilities. I do need to figure out, like, what are you trying to plot? Like, you know, like maybe Voidren, but the, the, I think the thing about Voidren is is catching people at instant speed, right? So the, the biggest flex is you could, I guess, plot a counterspell for the memes. But uh, <laughs> right now, I do like this card. I don't know if it's, like, I, it looks decent. It looks decent just because it's two mana and where it fits on the curve could be nice in a control deck. I feel like it was designed to be for a plot deck. I think that's how you power up that negative six where you get to copy all the things you play for the turn is you like plot a whole bunch of stuff, get to the ultimate, and then you unplot everything and get two copies of it, like this weird like combo turn. Richard, I got to ask you, one of the things people are talking about with this card is it may be breaking modern because that second plus one, uh, you can plus one it and you can plot a Valky God of Lies. Yeah. But then the next turn, turn four you Valky, cast the baby. Pivot side and get the big planeswalker kind of like remember when we were cascading into Valky and casting Tibalt and that like broke modern for a while uh, do you think this is actually legit even with that timing restriction are we gonna see this bringing Valky and Tibalt back to modern <laughs> I'm starting nah. to think that Valky <laughs> after current play you're gonna die to like some rhinos or something before that I mean <laughs> I think this is Tibalt I think unless there's like a plot deck where you somehow need to use this mechanic like it doesn't really generate any advantage and I don't know. Like the 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 playing on turn four is not horrendous if it actually did something useful. But like you're just gonna play this on turn four and then play a two drop. Like that's not a very exciting turn four in any format because our turn four plays are so explosive. Like I'd rather just play a children, right? And like maybe maybe you play this and you counter their children, but then you just got a Jace Reaver. It's like Tibble. It's like okay, you resolve the Tibble, cool. <laughs> you do some stuff and like no one cares and like it's not relevant. And, like, you're giving away information <laughs> with the plot. Like, you have to have a sorcery thing that you're going to play. Like, I don't know. It doesn't It doesn't seem to generate any advantage. It's like you're you're playing a very fancy looter, right? Like, is that really what you want to do? And I feel it doesn't generate enough advantage, but who knows? Maybe maybe the truth is you, you shove out a Valkyrie on turn four, right? And that beats modern. But I... I can't see it. You're just going to die to a Scion or something like before any of this happens. So I, I it seems way too cute for what it is. <laughs> I think once you add Leyline of Anticipation into the mix, you are building the cutest deck in history. Like, if you're <laughs> trying to, like, play Leyline so you can Jace. But it's not even Jace worth it. On like, your you just turn. get a Jace. Like, it's like, if you just play this on turn two, is it even that bad? <laughs> like, are, yeah. are you like, oh, I'm so oppressively behind on tempo. It's over for me. I'm like, actually, 
I think I'd rather I have think... you play Jace than like a Blood Tide Harvester. I think this is good. I mean, you might be able to rush the ultimate pretty easily. If you could just slam this on turn two and just like plot, 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 ultimate, copy everything, maybe that would be too good. But it doesn't really defend itself like at all, yeah. right? The turn it comes down, it is no defense. It's looting. It's putting something in exile for a future turn. So this isn't going to protect itself. So something as simple as a Blood Tithe Harvester is going to be attacking down its loyalty. So maybe it would be fine on turn two. Although I do think like... It's not Tivald. It's way better than Tivald. Like, if it was a it, plus one draw, we, we're, we're in business. But just a loot? Like, at least you it's put not this down. Did you make any progress? Tivald made you more loot life randomly. Your opponent beats this down. <laughs> Tivald made you loot randomly, though. You would discard yeah. your gambling every turn with your looting, which that's right, what really so, kills So Tivald. Seth the Crimp, I'm sure you guys will play this. And, and here's yes. how you tell if the card is good. When you eventually play it on turn four... Will people even bother swinging their creatures into Jace? <laughs> that is that is how you know. Like Tivol just got the respect pass. I'm like, I, that, actually, Man. <laughs> we're just going face. So if people start swinging into Jace, we're cooking. If they're not, then then you probably just wasted a card slot in your deck. <laughs> I, I, w I would say, though, you know, like everyone discredited Jace uh, Perfected Mind at first, and and and, and it popped off. I don't know, that, dude. It does. It does mail. That's true. That is true. Yeah. That is like a what? win con. I I, 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 I will always at least acknowledge a two mana planeswalker. Right now, Tybalt obviously is the other side of the <laughs> scale where it is completely god awful. And then there's, there's Ren two, and six. right? Him and yeah. Ren then there's Ren. And six. <laughs> there's so now three. Jace is in between. I'm pretty confident yeah. it is somewhere in between Ren and six and Tybalt. Exactly where I don't know, but it's somewhere in there. <laughs> It's definitely not Ren and Six, but I think he's no. in his uh, category of his own, right? Like, this this is, it's nowhere near Tybalt. Bad, come on. Richard, I gotta, before we move on <laughs> to another mechanic, I gotta, I gotta ask you about Kellen Joins Up, just because, so Kellen Joins Up, three mana ban enchantment, it has the same ability, the, the plotting a thing mana value three or less, does this change your answer to the Tybalt Velky thing? Because in theory, since this is three mana, you turn one mana dork, Turn two, play the enchantment. Turn three, get the Tibalt. Is that enough to be good in modern? Or is that still too cute? <laughs> I don't think that's worth. Okay, so do you have a very strong backup plan that doesn't involve Valky? Given that you are 5C here playing Bant and then Valky, probably I not. Uh, I, I will say I hate this card, though, because it totally looks like a creature. Like the art <laughs> is just Kellen there, but it's actually it a legendary like enchantment. A um... I don't know. It maybe I, I'm sure someone will five zero a league with this random pile, but is that going to be good enough? I don't. I don't know. It is Valky that scary? That that is my question. With Leyline binding sitting around, like like even if you sneak a Valky in, does like anyone care? <laughs> like it doesn't seem to be as game breaking as it once used to be. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, is, I is Valky gonna get banned? You know how many things keep breaking Valky? That's the <laughs> other side of it. I mean, Tibble, I think, is still a strong planeswalker. You're right. It is answerable. I think the big problem is when it was good, you didn't even have to draw it, right? You just cast a Cascade spell and it yep. would find it in your deck. With this, it's kind of like drawing a two card combo. So I think it's going to be way less consistent. So I'm kind of where you're at. Like, I don't think it's actually going to be a competitive deck in modern, although it does seem like a deck that someone will probably spike a league with at some point and everyone will talk about it and it'll, or good against the odds deck in a minimum. All right. Uh, let's move to, uh, to a new mechanic called Saddle. Uh, we, we are in the Wild West. Uh, so Seraphic Steed is a two mana, uh, green, white unicorn mount. You want to talk about holy power creep. So two mana, two, two, first strike, lifelink. <laughs> When it attacks while saddled, create a 3-3 white angel creature token with flying. And then saddle four. This one actually has reminder text on it. So it's like basically crew. Tap any number of other creatures you control with total power four or more. This mount becomes saddled until end of turn. Saddle only as a sorcery. Is this just... Wow. A two man, a two two? It's not even does legendary. <laughs> it's like, oh, it does like, this? Stack these up. Wow. That's, like, that's a bit of a power creep, I think, right? For a two-drop? 
Yes. Yeah. I think of grizzly bears. This is like grizzly bears with first strike and life link that also can make angels every turn. And it is possible to be saddling this. I'm imagining the reason I'm kind of high on this is it's one of those snowball cards, right? Like imagine you're on the play and you just drop this on turn two and then follow up with a four power three drop and you can attack it as first strike. So it's hopefully not going to die in combat and you get the angel out of it and just start snowballing it. Worst case, it's a two drop that trades up into an angel late in the game where you can just chump attack to get the flyer out of it. The card's seems really good to me what do you think of the mechanic i've seen a lot of people call it like it's lazy it's just crew again they just made crew but it's on creatures but it the flavor fits right like well what else are you gonna yeah. do the old west set like you, you saddle your horse and you ride your horse like uh, so like yes it is crew basically for creatures but the flavor works yeah so flavor wise it's fine i won't say that it, it it's crew i mean it, it's close to it's crew, mega crew, uh, crew. <laughs> uh, it isn't. It's actually what. So we have Megamorph, right? Which gives you the minus, the plus one, plus one counter. This would be like if it flipped up and then gave itself a minus one, minus one counter. <laughs> so I don't know what kind of uh, like what what makes what's a better name for a worse version because I don't think it's fair to call this crew because you want to be able to dodge sorcery stuff. Vehicles do that right now in a format where there's like sunfalls and things like that. This just sitting out there in the open and getting picked off with sunfall along with everything else will be hilarious. So I don't know. It's a downside that it doesn't have crew. Isn't sunfall a downside uh, I, to I, every creature though? No, no, no. <laughs> I'm not even talking about sunfall. I'm talking about like any board wipe. There's a lot of sorcery uh, speed, like a lot of sorcery speed stuff so going it around right it's now. Like if so you don't have the board wipe, it was dead. a vehicle. Yeah, <laughs> like this is the I, problem. I just, right? I just like vehicles more because personally, vehicles they could survive a board wipe, right? That yeah, makes sense. Like maybe vehicles are a more powerful card type than a creature with saddle in a in a meta with a lot of rats. I can see that argument. I think this card is really good though, right? Isn't this like a removal check card where like if you don't find a way to deal with it or block it, it's just gonna run away with the game? I mean, yeah, yeah. Like uh, obviously, it's very powerful. The upside has to be there in this format, right? Where there's tons of sorcery speed stuff that can clean sweep everything. So this is definitely a removal check, thus justifying all the sweet removal and answers, I think, that are existing in current standard. Uh, but so, I feel I'm actually... Well, go ahead, Richard. Go ahead. Removal is so strong that this may just suck, right? <laughs> because, like, what, what happens, right? It's a 2-2. Two -two, so either you remove it immediately, it dies, the Doom Blade does nothing, right? Or let's say you take a hit, they, they didn't manage to crew it, and then you put down a 3-3, three -three, they, they crew it, they saddle it, sorry, you take a hit, and then they just sunfall everything away. <laughs> like, like maybe it actually doesn't accrue enough value. I can see a world where it actually just sucks, but I can see a world where it just, like, removes aggro from the format because everyone's running around with, like, two, two first strike life blinkers. You stack up two on defense, like, two, four, four blocking, like, no one can get through it. I can see it running away, too, but it I does mean, die to Doom Blade, and it does clean up nicely to a sunfall or a farewell so temporary lock you're you're thinking way yeah. too big i wouldn't even use i just use temporary lockdown on this or a shock or a cut down right like the, the, this is I, I think despite all of that though this is a two drop so i think that yeah it dies to doom blade it dies to all these things like everything else does but it, it's also selesnia which forces okay, the part that these that players, is the problem right? if this were boros i think this would be a different story I, if this were Boros, I think this would be a very good card. But because... it was single black, <laughs> I mean, so so the bar for a playable two drop is a three two, right? Like so, it's underpowered theoretically. So I can see a world where this actually does absolutely nothing in standard. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, <laughs> is this where Naya tokens? <laughs> this is where Naya tokens comes into play, right? <laughs> is that a good deck though? <laughs> it could be. Maybe this is what it needed. I think you just want to be a stompy deck. I think you really want to follow it up with a four power power three drop. I think that's like the dream of it. Whether or not like you kind of run into the green problem in standard, right? Like where green just sucks because it just plays these big things that die to everything. So maybe you have that same issue there. So, but, so you uh, chump attack, but then you just pretend you cast a two mana three three flyer. Like yeah, so worst case, not Sarah yeah, Sand. worst what's case, the, the you get a flyer out of it. Uh, the one with the J. Uh, oh, with the Jace Avatar? Sarah. No, no, no. Sarah, 
No, not Era. Ascendant, not Avatar. The one with literally the Jace Temple. I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of the name either. How are we all blanking on this card? But yeah, Death of Taxes has left play. us for too long. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it'll be it'll be interesting. I think Saddle like. I don't know. I like how crew plays. I think that crew plays well with vehicles. So it's a cool little upside on uh, on creatures. And I like the flavor. So I think it's a fine mechanic. All right. Uh, okay. So, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm cool with, like, saddling this, like, random unicorn thing. But, like, how do you feel about saddling up the Gitrock monster? <laughs> is this, <laughs> Yo. Is this, why? Is this disrespectful or something? Okay, I mean, I guess Thalia already did this, but... This seems weird, but <laughs> saddle up, get wrong. Ravenous ride, five mana, Golgari, three black, green, six, five. Frog, horror, mount, trample, haste. When the get wrong, ravenous ride deals combat damage to a player, you may sacrifice a creature that saddled it this turn. If you do, draw X cards and put up to X lands from your hand onto the battlefield tapped, where X is the sacrificed creature's power, saddle one. This card's so good. This card seems sweet. Six, five mana, six five trample haster. Like it has good stats, and then it has a relevant ability where it's like drawing you cards and ramping you. I feel like this card's like, can't you just slot this into like Golgari mid range and like sack your Mosswood Red Knight to draw some cards and ramp and then cast it from your graveyard anyway? Or we have so many legends these days. You sometimes run into the like, I have a Gliss on the battlefield, but a Gliss in hand. Well, you might as well sack it to the Gitrog and draw some cards and ramp and play the other one. Isn't this just a good threat in standard? I think haste gets around a lot of the issues you were talking about before of all the yeah. sorcery speed removal. This is coming down and smacking your face for a bunch. And Wizards actually mentioned during spoiler season, during the preview stream, and, uh, that this is one of the sets that was actually designed with uh, Shieldred in mind. And if you look at a lot of these cards, most of them get through Shieldred. This, like, yeah, it'll trade because of Death Touch, but this does attack through a Shieldred and, like, get a Shieldred off the battlefield. So, so you instantly kill I, yourself by sacking a big creature with children on the battlefield. Nah, you can you can not ride it. <laughs> you can choose I, not to saddle it. Whoa, whoa, no way. You you always gotta try to saddle the Git Trog. That thing is sweet. It's adorable. Uh, but on top of that, I will say that this is interesting because normally you're used to a five drop haster out in red. Mm -hmm. So now that it's being added into another color, into Golgari, this adds a whole new element of aggression to that mid-range deck. It'll keep at least control decks somewhat honest uh, in, in that, like, hey, you better, you know, like, you can't just go super low. Because good amount of times, I knew I just, there was nothing hasty that would come out. Axe Bane, whatever, didn't really count uh, from the last set. So, yeah, this this card is actually a bomb. Um I don't know, like, what else are they playing at the five drop, the Golgari decks? I don't think they're playing anything, so outside of, like, maybe a Gixxas command? Aklazots, usually. Usually oh, one Aklazots, pretty much all the... Aklazots yeah. has been sweet, but, like, Aklazots doesn't have haste, so I, I think that this is pretty good. I don't think this is, like, a four of or whatever, but I could certainly see this being, like, kind of in the Aklazots role, where you're playing, like, one or two copies of it. It's going to be good when you have it. It is legendary, so you, and, and it is expensive for the deck, so you never want to have, like, three of these in your hand. But I think that one or two seems really good in those mid-range decks. This seems unplayable, but okay. Five mana really? Is a lot in Five mana is a lot in standard, and you're just, you have to sack your... So if you're trying to attack with haste, right... You're trying to put pressure and end the game, but then you you, you got to like sack, you got to saddle a creature, right? So that that takes away attacking power, but then you're also sacking it for more card advantage, but you're playing like this hasty thing to try to close out the game. So it's at odds with what it's trying to do. Plus five mana is a lot. Like getting to five mana in standard, like you, you can't get there mm. in a lot of games. Like you may be better served just playing more Shieldreds and like, you know, ensuring your four drop is impactful. Like wait so wait wait to me wait. this is a commander card. I I don't what? know if people are gonna be get rocking in on like Holy have we not had haste. five mana hasty threats before that people just don't play? But <laughs> not in, not in Golgari. And on top of that, like the fact is that you don't need to saddle it to give it haste. You just gotta drop it down and swing. Right, yeah, you can it, always, you can always six not five pace it. trample. That's always Villa. get in there, like like smack them with upside, especially with your favorite MVP in modern. You know, Mosswood Dread Knight. Like you just sack the Mosswood if you need at a later point in the game, get the value, and then also pay two to cast it again, more value. This is pretty good in standard, I think. Right, but you gotta get As the a one lands. <laughs> you I do mean, that pretty easily. 
I do like this in Commander too. Like, I do think it is a good Commander. It's got, like, Disciple of Bolas built in. Like, being able to repeatedly, like, every turn it lives, sack something to draw a bunch of cards and ramps. Seems really good in Commander too. but I'm definitely higher on it in Standard. I think, like, Standard games are still pretty long and grindy. Yes, yeah, sometimes yeah. you're into Boros or Mono Red, but, like, in general, I don't think the format's too fast for this card. Like, it's, and in a bad matchup, you take it out and play more Aklazots or whatever your life gain side, more shouldered from the sideboard if you're into Mono Red and, like, just have that tech for it. Okay, it'll be interesting to see. I mean, oh, five mana. Like, I, I remember playing, like, Thrag Toss. You can't even get to Thrag Toss. You're, like, dead before that. <laughs> five mana is a lot. Think, but think I, it, I like, do Thunder like Maw. Thunder Maw Helk. I, it's Thunder Maw Helk, like, Richard. Think of it like that. That's a good Boomer Haste five drop. <laughs> yeah. The game, oh, that's true. Sometimes, sometimes it's ETB mattered, but most of the times. So Rankle you know, like, was a four mana Haster that people played, right? Yeah. In, yeah. In black, yeah. True. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm, I'm down for that. I mean, I, I'm, I'm certainly down for the Moss with Dread Knight combos. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right. Let's talk about Spree, an exciting new mechanic. Kicker. <laughs> Kicker again. <laughs> Final showdown. It's a single white. It's an instant. But it has Spree. Ironically, it doesn't even tell you what Spree does on this card, uh, even though there's ample room. Uh, so... When you cast a spell with Spree, you can pay uh, for its additional modes. And they resolve in order. So the first one would be plus one generic mana. So, sorry, one generic mana. All creatures lose all abilities until the end of turn. The second ability is one generic mana. Choose a creature you control. It gains indestructible until end of turn. And then three double white. So five mana. Destroy all creatures. So <clears throat> this could be a six mana instant speed wrath. It could be a two mana weird dress down. It could be a two mana give one of your creatures indestructible. It could be an eight mana. Everyone else loses all abilities. You get one creature that loses indestructible or one creature gains indestructible and then you wrath. So it's like this modal thing where you can piece it together and uh, the minimum is one. Uh, you can theoretically cast it for one and, and do nothing, I guess. You, you cannot uh, cast it for one. Oh, that you you have, have to choose at least one additional Okay, so cost. you have to yeah. choose. So this is a two to seven mana, or five, six, seven, <laughs> two to eight mana <laughs> modal spell at instant speed. This card's absurd, right? This is this not sweet. like an absolutely absurd... I don't... <laughs> Uh, what format? I, I kind of don't like <laughs> I mean I think in commander this is like absurd but I also think it's just like a good standard card and maybe pioneer card I don't know about modern maybe oh, probably not in modern, modern? <laughs> probably not but pioneer standard commander does I, it replace I, I, Sunfall I will, or Farewell no I, I don't think it nowhere near that right because this I am looking at it the only mode you'll be using out of the decks that play the Sunfall and all that stuff are probably going to be like prior, like earlier than the board wipe is the first one, right? All creatures lose abilities. Um, because let's not lie, there's not many situations where you're going to choose a creature you control unless you're the domain deck. And then for six mana, this is an instant speed sweeper, right? So we do have a lot of board wipes, and with all the board wipes, this being instant speed is kind of cute it makes it like decent but it's not better than I, I don't think like deadly cover up i don't think it's better than than definitely not better than sunfall or farewell this is this feels like it's an all-star in commander i think it, it really? standard wise you don't, you don't like I, the instant speed aspect of it that's not enough to to put it in that top tier for you i feel like being an instant speed wrath is like incredibly powerful especially if you're a control deck that's just leaving up your mana for wandering emperors counter spells like i feel like it's game changing we've never had an instant speed wrath this uh, efficient before ever but but then what are you what are you cutting for it so do you think it's better than the sunfalls probably some of them like maybe you, would, you play two you and cut two sunfall for these I mean, because losing all abilities does a pretty good imitation of exiling in a lot of matchups as far as getting rid of indestructibility or creatures with abilities like that. I guess it's not as good against Dread Knights or something recursive, but I what feel about, like the upside's high enough, yeah. I mean, but there's like the Boros Convoke decks, you know, Mono Red. They don't really 
care about their abilities. They care that they just hit you with like a, a, a wet noodle, to be honest with you, a one one, right? That's fine. Like, so you think it's just too slow against the aggro? Yeah. That one extra mana. That one extra mana is all the difference because then yeah, these but... clunk, these cards clunk up real fast. But then when you play Depopulate over Sunfall, because it's a turn faster, like Boros can kill you before not you get entirely. to Sunfall with a good draw. Not not entirely, right? I, like the thing is, yeah, sure. Turn four and turn five are, are, are I, I could say you could definitely maybe last till turn five. You And then on top of that, getting the 2-2 body or the XX body incubate token allows you to block, be aggressive. This just only sweeps the board. And it's also a turn later. So you might not even be alive to see that. And it plays better when you're able to go and play like Sunfall, hold up two mana, and block with something, right? Whereas I guess this one is nice that you get to immediately, like you get to sweep on their turn. But having that token was relevant. It was relevant. Hmm. I mean, turning off Shielder's abilities, that could be relevant for a turn. Like, you're, you're probably getting some value by out of that four first or five mode. then, right? Like, you, like <laughs> but I you get to draw cards. <laughs> <laughs> That's again great in commander. I think this card is really good in commander, but in standard, I'm not sure we're there yet. Not while there's other sweepers. And at six mana, I'd rather the the flexibility to clean sweep everything, especially with the lands deck running around. Why wouldn't I want to just exile the graveyard entirely on top of that? So just to clarify, if I cast this the first mode in response to Atroxa. It's still going to work, right? This is applying to all the creatures on the battlefield when this resolves compared to a dress down, which is a static that sits out for the turn. Yeah. Is that that's the correct reading of this that card, is right? so it's not is going to I'm fizzle reading. in a Troxa or an Itali or something like that. The ETB that would make will it a still lot happen. better if you could fizzle the ETBs and stuff like that for two mana. That would that would be interesting. That's what the way think, I Richard? read it. Does it kill anything in standard? So, for example, if you dress <laughs> down, it kills territorial kamu right because that's a star star and then its ability gets turned off becomes a zero zero it dies if it kills something in standard at instant speed for for two mana then we're talking otherwise six mana is too slow because it's not one extra turn right it's one extra turn and you have your six land drop right and if you think about yeah. it for a second if you actually hit a land drop every single turn for six turns right you only had like six or seven cards to play with, right? And one of them is this final showdown. Like, are you in any shape to survive? So it's not just making it to your sixth turn. It's making it to your sixth turn with the land drop and like not being on death's door. Like you don't want a wrath at six, go to three, then die to get wrong or something, right? Like you need to be in a healthy shape. So the first mode needs to do work. And I don't think blocking children is enough. But if it just randomly picked off some random star stars or something in standard, then maybe you could do something. <laughs> you can I think like, that... kind of embarrass the one brave, like, Erberg Lurgoif player. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, it lives. Yeah. I mean, I don't think that there's anything like that. Like, that's more relevant in modern, I guess, which maybe there's an argument. So, Richard, I know you played a lot of modern and you play answers to like Urza Saga, your crime punishments and stuff. Is there any argument that this makes into modern as a bad wrath for modern, but as a decent dress down to snipe Kavu's Urza Saga tokens like maybe that's the primary mode and then the wrath mode is like the backup for when the game goes long who's making it a six mana <laughs> like, like nobody's making it to six mana in modern well, and that's I mean, fair if I made it the six one mana, ring? I probably don't want a wrath <laughs> I feel like half my one ring games go to turn like 20 in modern because I was just protected like, all the time that, and a handful of cards. Do for you? <laughs> someone's one ringing. Like, what is this card doing at that point, right? Yeah, I guess that's true. I guess that's true. Like, like, all right, what like about six mana is Titan, Seth? Like, <laughs> that, that's Titan. <laughs> but this can kill a hasty Titan before it gets to attack instant speed. I think y'all are under okay, okay, okay. I, 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 I want the saucy one, Commander. Will you actually play this in Commander? Everyone's like, oh, oh this is so good. Yeah. Top 100%. tier. Yeah, this really? is in the this is in the top. For me, it's in the top tier RAS in Commander. It's like, no farewell, really? but it's still really good. I think farewell is better. Hammering over route. <laughs> like I don't yeah, play Vanquish route's... the Horde even that often. Like, I don't play straight creature rats. Like, you you guys like this? What are you cutting for it? I think being 
I think being instant speed is huge. I would play this so, I mean, I guess it depends on how many rats you play. I don't think you cut your farewell for it. I think you want something that just hard resets everything. So I don't think you cut that, but I would play this over like the Wrath of God tiers for sure. I'd probably play it over Vanquish the Horde. Like, I feel like you the play Vanquish the Horde at all, though? Because <laughs> I, I play <laughs> How what wrath do you play? Board. You ten wrath players. How what are your ten wraths? <laughs> Austere command, undo inversion, our revelation, devastating mastery, planar cleansing. Oh, well, like oh, like there's no a billion I, of them. No wonder I can't do anything in our commander game. <laughs> Those just blow up everything. Like like I, okay, I used to okay. play route. Like occasionally I would play route, but that wouldn't make the cut very often. And this is just like a route, and route has been around for a while. Like everyone's like instant speed. Ah. Yeah, there's settle the wreckage as well, but. People phase call, out still. This doesn't help you. To call it just a route, though, is a disservice to this card, I think. It is so much more than that because of the two modes prior of, of the board cheap. wipe. It's like yes. the, the thing here is route is just always going so to be So route is five mana wrath, can't be regenerated, and then seven mana instant speed. So this would be yeah. a six mana instant speed wrath. So it is more efficient than a route. It is way more efficient. And on top of that, the first two modes... Might come into play well before, like when you need it to. When you like, hey, you're the one with all the creatures. You don't want to clearly wrath. So, I don't know. I I think it could be relevant. I I, I like so, Crim, this Sunfall or Final Showdown in in <laughs> Commander? Commander in Commander. Uh, in Commander, I'd play Final Showdown. Yeah, I would. I would as in well. Commander. Plus, you can put it under a scepter, which sounds absolutely miserable. That's hilarious. Wait a minute, that, you broke, you've broken it. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That changes everything. I, th I think Isochron Scepter might finally be broken. I think they finally did it. <laughs> we, yeah, there there are some cook. shenanigans for being one mana value. You can find it with Micromancer. There's tutors for one mana value stuff. It goes under Scepter. You find it with Sunforger, which I know you don't like Sunforger, but uh, there are some shenanigans just because the mana cost is technically one, even though you're getting the wrath out of it. So maybe that increases the value a little bit in some commander decks. We're, we're on to the 20 Wrath meta as we just, <laughs> no, everyone, everyone, no, everyone, no. multiple Isochron Scepters. And because we're playing Final Showdown, <laughs> we can't remove the Isochron Scepters. So they all just stick around. <laughs> I'm down for it. We're, we're ready for another uh, Stupidest Control Viewer. We're ready. I'm, <laughs> I'm in. I'm in. Gosh. I'm in. We rule zero. Everyone starts with Isochron Scepter with Final Showdown under it. That's, <laughs> that's, that's the starting state. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, how about Rush of Dread? Three man. Oh, Krim loves this one. Three man of black sorcery. I do. With spree. One generic. Target opponent sacrifices half the creatures they control rounded up. Plus two. Uh, oh, sorry. Two. Target opponent discards half the cards in their hand rounded up. And then two. Target opponent loses half their life rounded up. I love this card. Why? Because it. Every, you notice on all of the modes you said they're rounded up. We love that. We love rounded up in this. This house. is like some weird invoke despair type this card. This is mini made them. Right? This is mini made them. Right? Like you get you get half. You get half, and you get whichever modes are relevant. So then I don't have to full price pay. Like, hey, this is I, if I cast cruel ultimatum and my opponent has like no cards, then I can just shave a little mana off and just get everything else that I care about. Right. I, I, I think this card is cool, and it's going to go infinite. I, I, I want to do a video for it once it hits standard with, like, Blood Letter of Aklazots, because that's, that's just an OTK, right? You just yep. kill somebody right on the spot, right there. So yeah, Losing half your life twice does do the job. Yeah. What about, what about, okay, so let's assume that combo doesn't exist, Krim. Is this card good? Like, is this something you play in a control deck or like the black mid-range decks in standard assuming you're not you know one turn killing with it somehow comboing with it like is it good enough as just a generic like whatever annoy you kill some of your stuff card uh i think that it, it, it's definitely something you could play in mono black or like a rakdos mid-range deck um well i don't see why not. i wouldn't say i'd need it in my esper mid-range because esper mid-range has such a high density of good cards that are like already you know solid uh this card does give you oh man that is half the creatures they control rounded up though that's nice unless they have one uh, no wait is it that was four mana to half wrath them <laughs> you could uh, just pull well, wrath i guess yeah technically but, it, but in these color in this color specifically mono black right like I mean, what am i left with the the drag down 
that's true. And you also get the upside of like maybe you're against control and they got no creatures and you can attack their hand or like maybe yeah. you want to lower their life total. So there is flexibility here. The modal, the, the modal part of it is is huge. the modal. Yeah, the modal part's huge. And usually these effects are symmetrical, but they're also unplayable. But I was thinking like Rankle's prank. There was remorseless punishment. Like for the last yep. few years, they've been printing these effects, but they're usually hitting you as well. And they've never been good enough to see play. The fact that this one doesn't hurt you at all, I think, is a, a really huge deal and might give it a shot. Plus the combo, I think, actually has a lot of potential. Like four drop into five drop win the game is that i have a chance to be good it, <laughs> basically that, that, okay that is pretty much <laughs> i want to see this in commander like this card's ooh. sweet in commander one week someone only, some, someone wrongs uh, you they like they like swords the plowshares your commander and you're like <laughs> I hate you. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna do everything in my power to kill you. Next week, you show up with Rush of the Dread, like eight million tutors, and all you do is recur Rush of the Dread on that one person. <laughs> uh, like, why do they make that? Like, why, why do they make this card? It's so hateful to like just one person. <laughs> I think it's that, made for 1v1. It yeah. is kind of brutal in Commander because you do have to, boy, you really do. I guess you go after the Arch Enemy in a generic game. You just go after whoever is furthest ahead. But I guess you can also split it up, right? Because they're each target opponent. Yeah. So if you spree let's, it, let's you can be everybody like, you sack once. you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, if you're already the Arch Enemy, why bring not, it, right? Bring it, bring <laughs> it. And in, in standard and like in, in like 1v1 format, so this could be fun. I, 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 I do like it. It looks sweet. All right. Uh, last mechanic, uh, the outlaw mechanic. Uh, congrats, boys. We've successfully guessed what the we outlaw mechanic was last podcast. Uh, <laughs> Double down is our example card here. Four mana blue enchantment. Whenever you cast an outlaw spell, copy that spell. Assassins, mercenaries, pirates, rogues, and warlocks are outlaws. Copies of permanent spells become tokens. These these cards, these double down cards, are always abysmal and standard. <laughs> so is... like they always do nothing for four mana, and then and then you try to play anything, and then they blow this up. <laughs> it's like okay, cool. <laughs> so <laughs> it's yeah, it's kind of necro duality, very much yeah, necro duality, but which was laws. bad. It's even like doubly awkward because. Outlaws have a legendary theme, like all the big mythic ones and rares are all legends, and you don't really want to be doubling up your legends because then they just kill themselves. You legend rule yourselves when they enter the battlefield. So the card itself, but mirror box, I, Seth. it's fun but not actually good. Like I love these cards, but I always lose with them. What do you think of the mechanic? This like batching assassins, mercenaries, pirates, rogues, warlocks. Is it doing it? Are we gonna have outlaw decks, Krim? Richard, do you think that's actually a thing, or do we just does it not matter and everyone just plays the good cards? I mean, we already have the outlaw decks, right? I mean, they they just printed a few leaders for that, but I mean, I I think that in in the standard meta, unless we start seeing a bunch of really good like cheap one drops, right? Because it's mercenaries. I, I haven't even seen a warlock that I that is like <laughs> relatively standard playable that I can think of off the top of my head. Rogues, okay. Rogues this does nicely, but they're kind of cheap, right? So, what am I going to do? Hold my one drop and until I play my four drop? Like that that seems a bit awkward. So, I think that again, unplayable in standard. Wonderful in commander, but like absolutely abysmal in standard. I what think, think <laughs> Wizards has run out of mechanics. Between saddle <laughs> and outlaws, <laughs> like what a dumb mechanic. I'm sorry. <laughs> like <laughs> I have to memorize like five random types, you know, like to figure out what an outlaw is. Like that. That is so. Is difficult. it that bad though? Is it that bad? I mean, come on. It's, it's so just not party. now, but in three years it's from now, when party. I bust out a random outlaw card in Commander, you're like, what the heck is an outlaw, right? And it it just randomly ties together random types. Like, is that an exciting mechanic? <laughs> like, I I, I it, don't know. It is if you can if you play that one. Like, what is it? The uh, is it like mercenary tutor? Right. Ah, Kettering summons. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Retirement yeah. boys, up to seven bucks. We're doing it. We're doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Finally paying Seth, off. I saw Seth post about that, and I was just like. That's so funny. I thought this was a fake card. I didn't know there was a mercenary tutor. 
<laughs> I've been saving those cards for so long, waiting for this day. Finally, my day to cash in my Kateran summons. Really, though, my criticism of Outlaws, though, is I feel like they didn't support it enough to matter. Like, as Richard said, you got to memorize these types, which honestly, like, I don't know if that's that big of a deal. But I feel like this mechanic, like... I don't see an incentive. I don't think Double Down's good enough because I've tried all these cards and I love these cards, but they're just not good enough. I don't think Double Down's good enough. And none of the other like outlaw payoffs, I think are really enough to make me play an outlaw deck. There's like Hellspur Posse Boss, which is a four drop that gives your outlaws haste. There's Laughing Jasper Flint that like does some thieving off your opponent's deck equal to your outlaws on your upkeep. But I don't think there's enough to really make me want to play an outlaw deck. I think there isn't Commander. There's like the new Olivia, the face commander of one of the pre -con is outlaw themed i think it'll be a thing in limited but i kind of wish they like pushed the mechanic enough that maybe we'd see an outlaw deck in standard because i think what's going to happen is the good outlaws will probably see play like someone will play like the new rakdos or the new veraska or whatever just as a standalone card but i wish there was more of a reason to actually like play all those types together in a deck and i just don't think we got enough of that to make it work in standard yeah like th this i i I'm going to go out on a limb here, and I think there's more payoff for a party mechanic than there was this, right? So <laughs> Yeah, I, I think I, that there really was for party. There, I think the, you're right. Because you had the weird... There, there was better payoffs, just actual better payoffs for party. This one, I like the idea of like having lumping like warlocks and giving them some love with some other like, you know, typos and stuff like that. But I do not see any reason to build an all outlaw deck. I declare magic unplayable. This this is allies, like, times five the problem. So if I give you random card art, I want you to tell me if it's an assassin, mercenary, pirate, rogue, warlock, or, or none. And I bet oh, you the accuracy rate no. will be 10%. Like, well, but you have right, other cards, guess. like like Merfolk. You, you look at the art, you're like, that's a fish-looking person. That's Merfolk, right? You're like, they have pointy ears. That's an elf generic looking person you're like is that a mercenary is that an assassin is that a rogue like these are just random modifiers that have no real meaning like what was was that person a core ally or a core soldier ally blacksmith like you know you can't tell what these types are it is so bad I mean, that i look at art and i can't tell if it fits the theme or not and i wouldn't like, be able that? to i wouldn't be able to answer that unless it was just very straightforward like oh that's obviously a demon Right, but, I, but like, but that I, works I for all of the popular type. That's a squirrel. That's an angel. Right. That's a vampire. That's a zombie. But, but wait, and then why you get to the weird ones. That's a why, rogue. Maybe everything's a rogue. Right. Like, why it's is just, that art standard required f for for I guess this like rogues and outlaws? I think like anything recognizability. That but no, like, no, can no. Can you but, name the playable outlaws in standard? Like, is blood type harvester be, an outlaw? I wouldn't be able to name anything like that is. Like, uh, if I look at the art of any of the old cards, I wouldn't be able to tell you anything except, okay, this is obviously a human. But any subtypes attached to it, like, oh, this is a human rogue. I, 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 a few things kind of look roguish, so that works. But I don't know. I feel like a lot of the art anyways was, has always kind of just been hard to tell what's a warlock specifically. I could tell you what's a Viachino. I could tell you what's a Merfolk. <laughs> Uh, Those are the good I, types to build around, right. right? But things like rogues or aristocrat or something, you're like, I can't tell what it is. Then we shouldn't be building around those types, right? Like, so, so yeah, you're right. Like, there, there are certain types that are impossible to tell. Like the ally problem. Like it was so. I guess it's fair. Yeah, great me. Yeah. Right. Everything's yeah. an ally or not an ally, and you don't know which is which, right? I mean, I think yeah. You also have the issue just with the set that like. Some things look like outlaws, but really aren't like railway brawler or whatever. Kind of the name and like even the weapon kind of looks like someone who would probably be an outlaw in the like real world, but technically doesn't have the type. So I can get that criticism, I guess. Although, like, I don't know. That's, that seems kind of nitpicky. Magic right? cards like, don't also make sense double down days. the second That's, doctor. You just got to embrace it. Somebody. Double. <laughs> so that was always in oh, universe. It kind of it kind of <laughs> doesn't it, it look like a fedora it? or something? Like, no, it doesn't even yeah, look that, like that, a... that is true. That oh, does. Don't, look like a Doctor Who. Oh, don't even say that because you know what's happening. I've heard some people say, "Oh, this set just looks like like magic characters role playing an old West set or something." Like that's all the theme of this set. And could you imagine once we get like Doctor Who but with magic characters, and it's just like there's Kellen in his garage eating a sandwich. Like we're heading, <laughs> we're heading that way. Like we're no, almost there. You're not dead. Like, you clearly <laughs> don't watch enough anime. That's the slice of life episode. You, you think you think Kellen is just always fist fighting and firing like his little laser beams? 
ones off. I don't know if he has one, but like, no, no, he's, he's going to have a sandwich every now and then, you know? Yeah, I guess everyone needs a sandwich now and then. That's that's true. That's fair. Uh, oh, so boy. <laughs> I think those are all the mechanics. I ah, Boy, there's so many cards in this set. What do you guys think about the overall power level of this set? Because I don't think we're going to get to many, to many more cards today. Although, um... We'll get to him next week when we talk about the best cards for Constructed. My impression is it's like in a very power creepy set. Uh, do you guys agree with that? Do you think this is a, a powerful power creepy set? I I think a lot. there are definitely cards that are very power crept and very strong. Uh, I think anybody right now before without talking about it, because that's for next week's episode, you can probably imagine and think what those cards are and just how the mechanics and all of that. But then there's a lot of cards that are just wordy in a really long-winded way of saying bulk. <laughs> <laughs> right, like, bulk with extra reading yeah, required. Yeah, like bulk, but with kicker, right? Like, like so there's, there's a lot of, there's there's definitely good cards here, but there's just definitely some, a lot, a lot of work. so many bears in this set that do way more than bear things. Like, we talked about the Slesnia one, but, like, I think almost every color has some overloaded two drop. Yep. It's definitely higher on the power level. Um, it's also very high at the complexity level. Like I said, you can't understand half the cards. They're missing the reminder text. But like Krim said, like at the end of the day, out of a set, 5% is playable or something, right? The rest is just bulk. So a lot of it is just meaningless nonsense. Uh, but I, I do think the power level is risen. I, I expect to see some of these cards in the older formats, and I expect to see a lot of them in Commander. Like clearly... Like to me, sp the the spree wrath was made for commander. Like they they just ninja it in here and called it a standard card. But like <laughs> they really wanted a commander is the speed wrath, and there it is, right? So there there will be a lot of commander playables in the set as well. Yeah, I mean they also apparently broke the the recent record at least for most legends in a set. Apparently, uh, as far as legendary creatures, so definitely is that that's going to have a lot of goodies for commander players. We got a couple minutes. Let me ask you. So one of the other exciting parts about this set is the special sheets bring new cards to Magic Arena for the first time. So we talked about how like breaking news doesn't really change the legality of cards or the special friends. They don't change the legality of the cards. But the exception is when a new card comes to arena it's legal and historic and timeless presumably for the first time there's a handful of cards that we've seen so far from these special sheets that are kind of exciting reanimate mana drain archive trap crim there it there's is. a couple you're excited for on there maybe cruel ultimatum coming to arena for the first time yes so mana drain obviously hyped archive trap i've been begging for mill to get some support like even more support and timeless and i think archive trap is definitely a good one considering that there's fetch lands and all of that but most importantly yes my favorite seven mana sorcery is back baby cruel ultimatum is on arena I'm going to force it in Timeless. I'm going to see if I even get to cast it. But, like, like this is going to be a fun card to play with. I mean, I just recently did a, uh, like, a sh Bolus Intel deck. So now if I can get Omniscience and just Cruel Ultimatum somebody, mm. Woo mm. It does, mm. it, it's really show and tell that wins the game. But that's not for the point. Cruel Ultimatum <laughs> is why we won. So, yeah, I mean, these cards, they're, they're definitely going to shake up Arita. My question for you guys is... How many of these, if any, do you think will be banned in historic and or restricted in timeless? Like the two main, so cruel ultimatum. I think you're safe, Grim. I don't think that's getting banned or restricted. <laughs> wow. Archive trap wow. the same. The two I'm really wondering about are mana drain and reanimate because those are cards. Reanimate two years ago was in jumpstart, but wizards excluded it from arena altogether. So a couple of years ago, they were so nervous they wouldn't even put it on arena. Mana Drain, I wonder about just because it's banned or restricted in every 60 card format, I believe, back to like vintage, it's banned or uh, restricted in vintage, banned in legacy. So, do you think they're just going to let people jam four Mana Drains in historic and timeless? Or are we going to see like historic ban it and it's restricted and timeless? What do you guys think? Is there any bans or restrictions out of these cards? Show and tell is legal. I shouldn't be, but yes, that yeah, is correct. So, so, as, <laughs> so, if you agree that show and tell shouldn't be legal, but yet it is. <laughs> This truly tells me that Mana Drain, Reanimate, these cards will be fine until they realize maybe we should balance some of the things in the format. But until then, Mana Drain, all these cards will stick around. 
I mean, reanimate is, I mean, it is faster than show and tell technically turn one, like faithful suiting turn two reanimate, but it's much riskier. You got to rely on the graveyard. It's much more hateable. You're not just going to combo kill. So compared to show and tell, I agree. It's safe mana drain. The thing I dislike most about it is they already made everyone play rare wild cards to get counter spell. And now a year later, you're gonna have to play mythic count wild cards to upgrade your counter spells into mana drains. Arguably, is... this may not be a full upgrade because Wait, it is all is it, not a... it is Trick good. It is it is it is good, right? It is good. It like let's not deny it here. But the decks that were playing that example are like Ragavan. They want like they're like blue red, right? They they play one red pip. They play everything with pips and only pips. Oh. This is just a bunch of colorless mana that won't do anything. So you may just counter something and you have the 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 the, the option of playing something else. But what are they going to do? Archmage's Charm? No. <laughs> That's triple blue. So I will say the deck that might want this because like is maybe control if those decks exist in Timeless, to then try to cheat out a five mana Teferi for two mana. That's about it. But even then, like, you gotta have it. I don't know. I'm not but saying I mean, that it's like, bad, but I am gonna you're say that it's... You don't spell, don't, isn't Mana Drain just, like, uh, from an optimization perspective, sure. Wouldn't sure. every single deck play Mana Drain over Counter Spell given the choice? Is there? There's no mana burn. There's no drawback. Even if you don't use the mana, you still got a Counter Spell, and you might use the mana, so it's better. The, the drawback is really only in the uh, when you're talking about the wild cards. <laughs> like, oh, do okay. do I need to actually use the wild card for this, or okay. can so I? You're just... saying you might not have to spend the Mythic wild cards, and you're probably okay in some decks at least, just running Counter Spell still. Yeah. Okay, that I can buy that. There, you're probably right. Like the is it deck, the amount you gain playing Mana Drain over Counter Spell is pretty slight, probably. Although maybe like Treasure Cruise or something, there could be times. Sure. But uh, so, but yeah. But is that a need like know. to where like it's not like that deck has any problems filling up its yard to Treasure Cruise early? So is that something where you have to? Uh, it, no, uh, eco economically on you a should, route. but you don't have. You should. To. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> What do you think, Richard? Ban restricted? Nah. Uh, I think they're going to make you spend your wild cards, and then they might <laughs> ban it later. I think that... Mana Drain is a counter spell, so they might ban it because counter spells get people salty. People do complain but, about but, but counter spells. It is Show literally and tell is counter spell. That's it. No, That's all it is. I mean, That's you can imagine a new deck that uh, pops up that actually does something useful, right? Like, Mono right blue now, you, you only play colored pips because you have counter spells. But if you know you're getting free mana, you might make other deck building decisions. Uh, <laughs> but mana drain is on very dash. powerful. It is yeah, very I mean, there's, powerful. Yeah. There's a reason so, it's banned in every other format. Yeah, it's, it's obviously a, it's a good powerful. card. Yes. <laughs> uh, anyway. I think that's our breakdown of Outlaws of Thunder Junction. I think that brings us to the end of our cast for today. No fish mail this week, but Richard, uh, if people want to send some in for the future, how do they go about doing that? Uh, hit us up at MTG Goldfish with the hashtag MTG Fish Mail, and we'll get two questions on air. We got we got to do questions next week because someone did a rebuttal on John Wick as a Western crim. You'll be interested to hear it. <laughs> a rebuttal? <laughs> a rebuttal in, as in... We're going to have a little scholarly, uh, an academic conversation here. About... <laughs> <laughs> anyway. That brings us to the end of episode 478 of the MTG Goldfish Podcast. Richard Graham, thanks for hanging out. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Thanks to Card Conduit for supporting the show. And we'll be back next week to talk about the best cards from Outlaws of Thunder Junction and apparently whether John Wick's a Western, whatever that is. So until it then, is. Ha have an amazing week, everyone. And this is a crew signing out.